这里妙他吧。Holy Spirit, I thank you that you touch people tonight. When you know, Luri, that thou do tilo Jesus tene. With the wind of your spirit. Kore when you know, lene do tilo. Come on, the Bible compares the Holy Spirit as to the wind. Jan zaga when you know, lene do re lo biol. And the reason why. Palo le sura. The Holy Spirit, a metaphor for the Holy Spirit is wind. Pablo, when you know, go lene pom saunale. It's because wind can be felt but not yet seen. Leha the miyabu. I mean, no, there's different levels of wind. I mean, no, the wind can come like a gentle breeze. But also, the winds can come so powerful like a hurricane. Come on, he wants to release the winds of change in this place tonight. The Holy Spirit. When you know. Wants to breathe upon you right now. Just put your hands out right where you're at. Don't, don't move. Don't move. Don't move. Just put your hands out. Some of you are gonna actually feel a physical wind come on you. As I release this, we release the winds of the Holy Spirit right now. We say, Holy Spirit, we welcome you to mark people tonight. Blow in this place, Holy Spirit. Release the grace of God over this generation. Open their eyes. Open their ears. Open their hearts, God. To fall in love with Jesus. Like never before. Lord, reveal the Father. And the Father's love. Lord, I thank you tonight that the Holy Spirit is blowing through this place. And there's a change that's happening. He's shifting things. He's shifting circumstances. He's silencing warfare. Listen, the devil's going to be gone with the wind. Blown away. Right now, he's releasing his goodness. Oh, the Father's coming tonight to release His delight to the sons and the daughters. He's releasing His spirit. 
when your name are not how ma. And we say, Lord, have you way. 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 Let the winds blow, let the fire fall now. When you lay down, but meet you. Let the winds blow, let the fire fall now, yeah. Let the winds blow, let the fire fall now. Lay down, Let the winds blow, let the fire fall all around. ရေရှိဝမြင်ချင်မာတယ်ဘာဝန်းစီဂျီဆက်စ်ဖာဒာရေရှိဝမြင်ချင်မာရေဝန်းစီဂျီဆက်စ်ရေရှိဝမြင်
You're going to start to feel the power of God. Some of you are going to feel it like electricity. Some of you are going to feel a heat. Some of you are going to feel a wind. Come on, he's coming on people right now. He wants to encounter you. With his love. He wants to encounter you. With his fire. He's with his glory. Now just be still. Be quiet in front of him. And let him touch you right now. And don't worry when people are crying out. It's only the Lord touching people. This is a fear-free zone. We have a good father. The Bible says he won't give a serpent to those that are asking for bread. The Bible says if earthly fathers and mothers knows how to give good gifts to their children. How much more the Heavenly Father knows how to give good gifts to His sons and daughters. So you don't need to be afraid because it's the Holy Spirit moving. So just take a few moments and like the Psalmist David penned, he said, be still and know that I am God. Listen, just close your eyes. And just be still before him. And watch how his love comes on you. Some of you are going to be shocked.
we bow down in your presence, Lord. Who we worship you, Jesus. For there is none like you. Who's worthy of my love. Who's worthy of my prayer. Oh, we stand in awe. We stand in awe of you. <laughs> you can have it all, oh God. You can have it all, Father. Alon Koro Pai Mare. Oh, we give you everything tonight. Tinya Matrilo Alon Koro Pai Mare. We give you our praise. Tinya Matrilo Chi Manje. We give you our whole life. Tinya Matrilo Bawa Da Kulo. And we say, God. Koro Pio Mare Koro. We want more. More of you and less of me. More of you and less of me. More of you and less of me. So won't you walk through this place? Touch your people, Lord. He's moving in this place. He's moving all over this room. Atmosphere of revival. See, what is revival? 
See, revival is the manifest presence of God. See, God is omnipresent. But he's not always manifest presence. See, his manifest presence is in this room tonight. He's touching our hearts. He's touching our lives. He's marking us with a fresh anointing for a new season. See, part of a prophetic conference is the prophetic song of the Lord. When, when God begins to proclaim the sound of heaven and the songs of heaven. It begins to unlock the atmosphere of heaven. And I've learned even if I'm in a, a, a nation that doesn't understand what I'm singing, it doesn't matter because we're unlocking the heavens. As we lift up the sound of heaven, he wants to teach you how to lift up the sound of heaven in the living room, in your car, at your workplace, wherever you go, because praise releases and changes the atmosphere. It shifts things. Oh, I'm excited for tonight. Listen, that was not planned. That was just being led to the Spirit. You know what the Lord told me He's going to do tonight? He said He's going to remove prophetic roadblocks. Where the devil tries to put a roadblock between you and your destiny God wants to release breakthrough have you ever been in a car driving you're following the GPS GPS and then you come to the road construction and you can't go where the GPS says GPS and all of a sudden you have to turn rerouting how many know the devil is continually trying to stand in the way of the road and the path that God has for us? And he lives uh, to try to make us reroute and to live in delay. Listen, God wants to break the spirit of delay tonight. He wants to break off delays in the spirit but also in the natural listen, listen in Matthew chapter 16 I, I want to share this principle with you Matthew chapter 16 Jesus came to his disciples and he asked them a question he said who do men say that I am and they answered him they said some say Jeremiah some say one of the prophets of old he said but who do you say that I am and Peter lifted his voice he said you're the Christ the son of the living God and Jesus in, in, in this chapter in Matthew 16 19 actually in verse 13 he, actually, he says this to Peter Blessed are you, Simon Barjonas, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but your Father who is in heaven. He said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. Upon this confession, this revelation that you had I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it because I have given you the keys of the kingdom that whatever you bind on earth will be bound in the heavenly realm whatever you loose in prayer on earth will be loosed in the heavenly realm 
Amen. Now I want you to see something. This is a prophetic conference. This portion of scripture is very important. Because it's the point in the disciples' life where Peter goes from head knowledge about Jesus to revelation about Jesus. It's where what he knows about God up here goes into here. And, and he, goes from, he goes from agreeing with everybody else in the day. Jesus is the healer. He's the prophet. He's a holy man. And all of a sudden he says, he's the Christ. And Jesus said, blessed are you. For your father has given you this prophetic revelation in heaven. And this revelation is like a key. They're open doors and shut doors. They're bind up the enemy. They're loose the enemy. And you see, this reveals to us the purpose of the prophetic. See, prophetic words are like strategic keys to open up your destiny. To shut the door on the enemy. I mean, you got to understand. The, the, it said in Matthew 16, 13, upon this revelation, I'm going to build my church. Did you know that prophetic words are given so that you can build the kingdom of God? See, God wants to give you prophetic words because they're like building blocks to glorify Jesus but for you to step into your destiny. How many know that if you have a vehicle you can't drive the car without the keys? See, many believers have the vehicle of the Holy Ghost or the vehicle of Jesus because they've given their lives to Jesus. But they're not asking the Father Lord, what are you doing in my life? Lord, what is my destiny? Lord, where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? And when he speaks, it's like he gives you the keys. And you can start to drive. And you got a GPS that won't fail because the GPS is the Holy Ghost listen it's not like the GPS of God is not like that demon Suri or, or her, her ugly cousin Tom Tom no not like that I hate when I'm driving and it takes to the wrong place. That's what so many people are doing. Because they're being led of the flesh more than the spirit. See, God wants to take you from glory to glory and from strength to strength. And you got to understand we have to learn some things about the prophetic. When you receive a prophetic word from God, it's so that you can pull up you can destroy the devil's kingdom and you can plant and build the kingdom of God. That's what God said to Jeremiah. When Jeremiah was anointed a prophet of God, in, in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 9 and 10, listen, God's going to do this tonight. He's going to anoint your lips. He's going to anoint your words that you would speak the things of God and that would pull up and destroy the enemy kingdom they would displace darkness and plant and birth the kingdom of God look at this Jeremiah 1 starting in verse 9 it says then the Lord called, uh, then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth and the Lord said to me behold I have put my words in your mouth 
See, I have this day set you before the nations and over kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to plant, and to build. See, prophetic words are so we can pull down the enemy. We can pull his kingdom down. We can destroy his strongholds. Listen, there's a generation that's going to break the powers of darkness. They're going to see modern day slavery destroyed. They're going to see prostitution, child, uh, uh, child abuse. Human trafficking destroyed in Jesus name they're going to see corruption in governments destroyed in Jesus name they're going to see sickness and pestilence and disease destroyed in Jesus name and God's going to give them ability to receive strategic keys that bind up the enemy's plans and shut the door on him but then open up the door to the blessings of heaven over a nation over their families and over their lives listen you want to talk about a prophetic conference I'm about to teach you about the prophetic what I've learned in 15 years of going to over 60 nations and given over hundreds of thousands of prophetic words where we've seen these words come to pass over and over and over again We've seen countless miracles all over the earth. But it's not good enough just for a few to carry this anointing. We're a prophetic generation. We're a prophetic generation. God wants this entire generation to carry the fire. To carry his power. To carry the word of the Lord. That they would transform society. Set the captive free. And they would call forth the glory of the Lord in the land of the living. Now, one of the first things you got to understand about the prophetic. Is the prophetic is potential. It's not automatic. So you have to understand this. Listen, the prophetic is potential, not absolute. And what I mean by that is this. The number one thing people ask me all the time is they say, when and where and how will my word come to pass? What God has said over my life. They'll say, I got that word like five times. But I haven't seen it happen. See, but the real question we should be asking is what is my responsibility with the word? See, because if you want to see the word of the Lord come to pass, you have to learn to partner with the word. You have to learn how to position yourself to see the word of the Lord come to pass. You can't just sit around. Oh, well, if it's God's will. We'll see. Did you know that's a posture of doubt? You know what faith looks like? 
Faith looks like this. Lord, I'm so thankful for that prophet. God, I value your voice. I don't know how it's going to happen, God. But I believe. I don't know where, I don't know how, I don't know what's going to do. But I believe, God. And then you go, Lord, how do I position myself to step into the manifestation? See, if you get a prophetic word that you're called to be a multi-millionaire, a billionaire for Jesus, then you know what you should do? You should believe God to get your education and get a degree. Because you got to understand why. Because when you do it, you're giving God a wine skin to pour new wine into. See, sometimes people, they think, well, if God really wants that to happen, if he wants me to be a billionaire, it'll just fall on me. You're crazy. Listen, nothing just happens easily. Everything in the kingdom of God will cost you. It will cost you everything. The anointing of God, the calling of God, the breakthroughs of God, they require that we push into Jesus, that we follow God, that we have faith, and also that we work hard. Come on, the Bible says that God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So we've got to learn how to begin to position ourselves to receive the word of the Lord. I'll never forget the, the second year of revival. I was praying to the Lord. Lord, I need a strategy. How to see finances come into our ministry so we can host every night revival. So that we can do crusades all over the world and win millions of souls. You know what happened to me? I had a vision. I fell out under the power of God. And and I I saw in the spirit my iPhone. And I saw a button. And it was a phone app. Application to cool, you know, do it. And it was called Elisha Revolution. At the time, our ministry was called Living at His Feet Ministry. And the Lord said to me, Son, I want you to trade in your itinerant ministry, Living at His Feet, for a movement. Movement to for a whole generation to be equipped and trained. Every movement about it, long every means of you being made up. Down there, see that? He said, I want you to call it Elisha Revolution. Every every name of you being made up, Elisha Revolution. So you being made up. He said, the main vehicle of this influence. Every day, you're not moving up, but you're up here, Malaysia. So yeah, it's going to be technology. Technology go down there, lure go up here. He said, it'll go all over the earth. Every time you look, you see the cool of machine. It will equip people. Lure go up here, Malaysia. Make the application. And it'll bring finances in for the kingdom. We're here, Malaysia. Every technology up here, we're Malaysia. I got off the ground. And it's no tiny, and it's hard. And I didn't know how to do an app. Before that moment, I never once thought about an app. I told my media guys, we're going to do an app. And they went, okay. Because <laughs> they didn't know how to do it. And I, they said, we don't know what to do. And the Lord showed me everything to do. I wrote it down. I took it to them. I said, I don't care what you have to do. Make me this app. I said, I'll pay for it. Then they came to me with the hard news. 
so we figured this out. But it's going to cost a lot of money. They said, we, we need $10,000. US dollar, And I was like, Ooh. oh. And you know what the Lord said to me? He said, I spoke to you. Now you decree it. See, what do we do with the word of the Lord? When all of a sudden the opposite happens. Do we push back, get intimidated? Or do we use it like a key? And in prayer, you unlock. You unlock the provision. You unlock the anointing. So I said, Lord, I thank you, God, for the finances of heaven. We decree right now that this App would come for. It would be paid for in Jesus' name. A few nights later, a man drove from Washington State to California. And he told our usher, Can you please come to my car? I have something for Jeremy Nelson. He says, but my back is injured. So I can't carry it. And so my usher went. And in the back of the car was $10,000 worth silver coins. And he grabbed. And he comes in. Boom! Throws it on the altar. So what is that? He said ten thousand dollars worth of silver coins. And the Lord said, "There's your provision for the app." Did you know that app? After we birthed it. And we finally figured out how to do it. We've got over 15,000 people from all over the world on this app. They watch from all over the earth. And what started out with a vision on the floor. We've, we've now seen two million dollars US come through this app. Any application update, two million dollars. And it's paid for the outpouring. And it's paying for all of our crusades all around the world. Listen, I got a crusade in Pakistan next month. Cost $70,000. We'll see a half a million decisions for Christ in this crusade. We'll preach to 250,000 people a night. I have another crusade in Malawi, Africa. Malawi, Africa. And this is going to be in April, the month after. April, And it's going to cost $50,000. US dollar, You know what's amazing? Already. This year. Both crusades are paid for. And they're paid for on the, on the phone app. People sewing all over the world. See, we have to learn to think differently. See, the congregation that I have, they're small. Only 200 people a night. They can't come up with this kind of money. But God's breathing on technology. So, so people all over the world are sowing into the kingdom. So we gotta, we gotta think differently. And listen, I'm not trying to make this about money. That's not what I'm saying. But I want to show you the creative process how to birth prophetic words. Because God wants to give you blueprints. He wants to give you strategies so that you can do what you're called to do. As you have to understand, God wants us to be like the janitor. You know what the janitor has? He has a key ring with keys to every door in the whole building. How many, how many know God wants to give you keys to every door in the kingdom? 
so that whatever you need, whatever door needs to open, you have the key to unlock that door. If it's the key of healing, no problem, I got the key from my father. Let me pray for you. If it's the key to deliverance, oh, deliverance, Oh, that's a smaller key. I got that one. Oh, wait, I need the key of provisions. Oh, I got that key. Oh, wait a minute. I got a key of intercessory prayer. Oh, I'm going to pull that out. Oh, I got a key of salvation. Oh, this is a big key. It's so big I can hardly carry it. Because God wants to save nations. See, God wants to teach us that the prophetic, prophetic is not just a good idea, but it's a God idea. In fact, God will build everything in his church upon the building blocks of prophetic revelation. That's why he told Peter when Peter said, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. Blessed are you, Simon Barjonas. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. But your Father in heaven. See, we need to get truth that's revealed to us by the Father in heaven. And when God the Father speaks, there's creative power to bring the word to pass. But we got to learn. We got to learn how to steward. We got to learn how to quicken the word of the Lord. Because often when God gives you a clear word, that's when the devil tries to put a roadblock up. You start driving in the vehicle of what your destiny is. You can see right in front of you down the street 20 blocks down. There it is. There's the destination. But when you're driving the enemy's working overtime to put a roadblock and a roadblock. Over here. Block over there. Try to stir up warfare in the family. Warfare with your finances. Warfare in the church with sickness and disease. And sometimes what happens is the warfare stops us. And we get so focused on the warfare that we get discouraged. And then the devil comes when we're, we're, we're discouraged. And he tries to steal our key. He tries to steal our prophetic word. I mean, you know that Jesus told a parable about the seed and the sower. He talked about how the, the farmer would sow seeds and some would fall upon the wayside. And the Bible says the birds of the air would come and snatch them. So the, some of the seeds were thrown upon rocky soil, thorny soil. And at first, that word would grow up quickly. The, 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 the crop would grow quick. But then the heat of the day would scorch it and it would die. But then he said there was a seed that would fall upon good soil. That would produce a crop some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. And Jesus, he interpreted this to his disciples. He said the farmer is, is, is me, the son of man, who sows the seed of God's word into the world. 
He said, "Some prophetic words, some of my words fall on the wayside." And before people can even step in, the devil snatches the birds of the air. That's the birds of the air. But he said some prophetic words, some seeds. They fall on rocky soil. And it, you know what it says? It says when the crop is growing up. It says that the thorns and the thistles choke it out. You know what Jesus said the thorns and the thistles were? He said they were the worries and the cares of this world. Come on, how many know that the devil wants to take your keys? He wants to take your seeds. He wants to take your promises. Oh, but we're going to learn how to war for our truth. How to war for our destiny. How to see the word of the Lord being a manifest. We're going to learn how to protect our words. You know why some people get the snatched word? Jesus said this, Do not cast your pearls before swine. At least man trample them under their feet. See the prophetic words of God and the prophetic promises of God they are precious. And when God speaks to you they're not for everybody to hear. See sometimes if you share the word with someone who has a spirit of religion or someone who has a, a wrong spirit. You say, wow, God told me that I'm going to be used by God to have a massive church. 10,000 people. I'm going to have revival to my nation. And God gave you that word. But you know what the religious will do? Wow, you're so prideful. Who do you think you are? Wow, you dreamer. Come on, you guys know what I'm talking about. Listen to me. Do not listen to them. And, and, and listen to me. The ones that you share your words with are others that have a spirit like your spirit. They're in faith. They're in faith for everything God wants to release. See, these are the people that we're to share our, our words with. Now I want you to see this. Because if you want to birth the word of the Lord, then, then, then you're going to have to become like Daniel. Did you know that Daniel in Daniel chapter 10, listen, he birthed a prophetic word because he read the book of Jeremiah and he realized God had given a promise that his generation was going to, was going to come out of exile. Listen, you want to know how to accelerate the word of the Lord? Here's what he does. He starts to pray. He starts to fast. He sets his heart on the Lord. And he pushes until something happens. See, God wants us to pray until something happens. And He wants us not to give up, but He wants us to war over the words. Now, here's the good news we have a new position with Christ that Daniel did not have. Because the Spirit of God lives inside of us. Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, lives on the inside of us. Did you know that Paul told his spiritual son Timothy? He said, Timothy, 
Do not neglect the gift of God. Or the prophetic words of God. That were spoken over you. When I laid my hands on you. He said, but wage a good warfare with the words. See, we need to learn how to warfare with the words that God gives us. We need to learn. How to pull up. How to pluck down. We need to learn how to remove the roadblocks that the devil wants to put against our ministry. Against our families. Against our calling. So you have to position yourself in a place of hunger in commitment to holiness you have to get desperate you have to learn to press into God's word and not to give up listen nothing comes cheap in the kingdom of God do you know that Jesus Yeshua told a parable about a merchant that was searching for fine pearls. And when he found a pearl of great price, he sold everything to purchase the pearl. And then he said there was a man who was seeking treasure and he found treasure hidden in a field and it says that he sold everything to buy the field listen God is looking for a generation who will sell out after the things of God to possess the hidden treasures of Jesus the hidden treasures of the harvest the hidden treasures of the kingdom of God on the earth. See, some of you, some of you need to learn how to birth your prophetic word. You need to learn how to pray through your word and learning to position yourself for your word. Listen, when I first got saved, I was getting prophetic words that I was going to preach to 30,000 people in Africa as a crusade revivalist. I was only 23 years old. And you know what happened? I positioned myself. I went and began to serve a ministry Ministry to that does crusade evangelism. Crusade evangelism ministry. Listen, servanthood is the quickest way to promotion. You know what this generation needs to learn to do? We need to learn to seek out mentors. Fathers and mothers in the spirit. People that we can look to who have already been successful in a thing. And listen, if you are saying today, that's easy for you to say, but I don't have the relationships you have. Do you know that many people have been my mentor? through reading their books through listening to their teachings I've been mentored and I've been taught so you got to learn this so that you can go to the next level but you got to understand you also got to position yourself I, I, I took the word of the Lord so serious that I was called to preach to the nations that when I was an intern at the church I was at you know what my job was? my job was anything they needed 
clean the toilet, car, wash the man of God's car, iron the clothes, go get the McDonald's, go get the Starbucks, go and do anything. And, and, and I was, uh, this is what I did. But I wasn't doing it because uh, I, I wanted to be seen. I was doing it because I was serving the Lord Jesus. As I was serving others. The closest I had to ministry was I was the catcher. I would sometimes catch 6,000 people a night. Because we had mass meetings. And then you know what happened? Listen, I knew though I was called to preach. So I drove my brother crazy. We lived in a one bedroom apartment. Me and him shared the room. And every night, I would preach in the bedroom with no one around to the mirror. I would set up, I would set up stuffed animals that my nephews had. Set them up. And I'd preach, Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Jesus did it, God, oh, yes, you know, and I would be like, we release the power of God. Uh, Loose. Loose. And then, psh, 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 psh. And let it And I would preach messages. I would practice messages. With no one watching. And I'd give an altar call. If you want Jesus, come to the altar. And my brother would say, dude, can you shut up? I want to go to sleep. And I'd be like, I bind him, Lord. In the name of Jesus. You know, I preach probably 500 crusades in my bedroom. And and you know what happened to me? I went to Africa with the man of God who's, who's preaching to 30,000 people a night. And the man of God got sick. And I was the intern. And, and, and he could not preach. He's really, really sick. So the crusade coordinator said, no problem. His intern will preach. Listen. Everybody on the team was scared. Because they never, they know I never preach. I got up there. And I mean, listen, with fire. I mean, this thing blew up this meeting. Miracle signs and wonders. Thousands of people healed, saved, and delivered. I mean, this crusade exploded. And the wife of the man of God said to me, wow, wow. You're, more, you're more anointed than the man of God. Hey, <laughs> and I said, shh, don't say that. Because <laughs> I was only supposed to be the intern. And the, the, the leader uh, that put on the, the crusades, he said, how many crusades have you preached? I was like, None. He was like, what? <laughs> See, I birthed my prophetic word <laughs> when no one was watching. Listen, and then we one... <laughs> and, and, and after that point, I started to preach. I went to the conference. Conference Big conference. Big conference And again, one of the speakers got sick. So they said, well, the interns got to go. Oh, and I'm telling you, I got up. Boom! I mean, and and they, they all, everybody there, they thought, man, this guy's been preaching forever. 
Little did they know I never preached before. <laughs> only the one time. And you know what happened to me? Literally, my ministry exploded. I was only saved for a year and a half. And the whole world opened. And I began to preach. To 3,000, 5,000, 10,000. See, the man of God I was serving, he recognized, wow, this guy's got the anointing. He said to me, you're not cleaning toilets no more? You're not going to iron the clothes no more? He said to the intern, intern, you clean his toilet. How many know I was like, hallelujah? Hallelujah! And I would be so embarrassed sometimes. I preach at some of the biggest churches in the world. The pastor would go, wow, that was so awesome. How long you been in the ministry? I was like, six months? And they went, what? So how long you been saved? One and a half years? What? We let you preach and you've only been saved one and a half years? See, this is what can happen when you birth the prophetic word of the Lord. I started preaching all around the world at 23, 24 years old. By the time I was 28, 27, 28, we were seeing millions of people impacted all over the globe. I began to preach on TV, began to preach all over. Went on the Sid Ross show. Wrote my first of my seven books. God started exploding on me. But it all started when nobody believed in me. When nobody thought that I could do anything. When nobody was watching. And you know what I would do? Listen, you need to learn how to birth your prophetic words. I would have them all written down. And every morning, I said, Lord, I thank you. Oh, that, that, that the man of God prophesied to me. That I'm going to carry the healing power of Jesus. I'd lift my hands to heaven. I'd say, Lord, let these hands be your hands, God. Lord, I thank you for the miracle power of Jesus. Lord, today, I am going to go to the streets. And I'm going to lay these hands on sick people. And God. I'm expecting that I'm going to see miracles because you said I'll see miracles and I just started going to the street praying for anybody I could this is way before everybody let me preach and so many miracles happen on the streets that pastors started saying wow wow Hey, can you tell that testimony to the church? I would get up and they didn't let me preach. But I just tell the testimony to the miracles. And then the pastor, he didn't have healing anointing. He'd say at the end of the meeting, everybody that needs a miracle, come. He's going to pray. <laughs> and I prayed. I prayed for every one of them. As if I was the man of God. I prayed for every one of them with the mindset that I had the strongest healing anointing in the room. Because when I was alone, I would pray in tongues. Listen, you know, you know I would pray in tongues. Because it tells us in the book of Jude. 
It says that we are to build ourselves up in our most holy faith by praying always in the Spirit, keeping ourselves in the love of God. And I began to recognize that I could pray in the Spirit over the prophetic words God gave me. So I'd say, Lord! You said you're going to open up Africa. Africa, you know the point, So I bring Africa before you right now. Shame on my Africa, you know you lie. Lord, I thank you. You open the doors. Lord, the God, you will point me. I thank you for the finances. Lord, I think we did it. I thank you, God, for the way. Oh, Lord, you will point me. Lord, I thank you for the angels going ahead. Oh, Lord, God, you demand the shaking to come. I thank you for all the relationships I need. Oh, you know, Lord, I think you need more. I love Jesus. So that I can go to that nation. I didn't know you need more. So I am a pillar of Jesus. And then when I didn't have any. Anything else to pray? I'd pray in tongues over. I said, Lord, I bring Africa before you now. My call to preach there. I said, I prayed everything I know, God. But now, Holy Spirit, I give it to you. Lord, I give it to you. Holy Spirit, I give it to you. Holy Spirit, I give it to you. Holy Spirit, I give it to you. I'd go to the next word. And it's another good deal. Lord, you said. You said that I was going to prophesy. You said, God. That I'm prophetic. You, you said, God, that I have the ability to release the word of the Lord. And so, Lord, I want you to anoint my lips. Lord, I want you to anoint my tongue. Lord, I ask you right now. I ask you for influence. I ask you, God, right now to open my mouth and to fill it. I said, Lord, your word says, open wide your mouth and fill it. And so I said, Lord, I'm willing to step out. And I will prophesy over everybody I know. But you got to speak to me. And I would pray. Right now, God, I stir up the prophetic revelation. I stir up the prophecies I'm about to release for the next five years. And right now I stir up for an hour in tongues those prophecies. I would do this every day. And then all of a sudden I would go places and when I minister, I was so prophetic, so passionate, I'd prophesy over everyone. And people go, how do you do that? Well, you don't understand, for the last two years, I've been praying in the spirit, the spirit of prophecy onto my life. I've been praying in the spirit for two years. God would speak to me for people. See, this is how you cultivate the word of the Lord. See, the, the prophetic is potential. Doesn't mean it's absolute. So you got to position yourself. You got to pray. You got to step out. Listen, many of you have words. The only thing that's stopping you from seeing the manifestation is you need to start walking it out. If God said that you're going to work miracles, it might be scary for you. But it's time for you to step out. It's time for you to pray for people in the workplace. It's time for you to pray for people who need healing at church. It's time for you to pray for people wherever you go. Listen, some of you need to wake up in the morning and say, these hands, these feet, 
the feet of Jesus. And everywhere I walk, everywhere I go, I have authority to lay hands upon the sick. Because Jesus said in the Great Commission, you know what he said? He said, go into all the world and preach. The good news of the kingdom of God. He said, those who believe will be saved. Those who do not believe will be condemned. But then, but then he said this. He said, but those who believe in my name he said they'll cast out devils they'll speak in new tongues see a lot of people don't preach that right there in the great commission Jesus mentions speaking in tongues and then it goes on. It says, if they drink anything deadly, it won't harm them. How many know you need to claim that? How many know you need to claim that no deadly thing can harm you? No coronavirus. No sickness. No disease. But Jesus said, those who believe in my name, speak in new tongues and then it says they'll lay their hands on the sick and they will recover now notice it said they shall lay their hands on the sick how many of you know that's not automatic. Because it requires you to do something. You actually got to step out and lay your hands. See, I'm bringing the prophetic tonight to a practical level. Because God wants to activate you in the things of the supernatural. Listen, I'm almost done here. And then we're going to pray. Listen, one of the things we got to do is change the way we pray. We need to begin to pray like we already have the victory. Listen, too many people, they pray from a mindset of damage control. They pray from a mindset of reaction. What does that mean? That means the only time they pray is when something goes wrong. How many of you know people like this? They don't pray at all. But when they ain't got the money to pay the rent, when they ain't got food to eat, when, when, when something's going wrong, oh, all of a sudden, shakabara. But what if you already lived in that prayer? And, and before everything could go wrong you've already prayed up and because you prayed up well everybody else is complaining you have an abundance you have everything that God wants you to have you're already five steps ahead of the devil and you'll be saying, devil, devil, eat my dust. Because he won't be able to put a roadblock in front of you. Because you'll be running so fast. He won't be able to keep up with you. You'll be fulfilling word after word after word after word. You'll be running. 
the devil. Let's go. He can't catch you. They no money, liar. See, this is what I'm talking about. We're a victorious generation. Come on, I want everybody to stand. I know it's getting late. But guess what? You guys get to go to sleep. And go tomorrow. And lay hands on the sick. And prophesy. And you get to go. Be the hands and feet of Jesus. For the rest of your life. With a brand new anointing. With a fresh oil. With a fresh release. Of power from heaven. Remember earlier. When I had us wait in his presence. I want you to wave at me if you felt God in that moment. If you felt, if you felt, if you felt God moving in that moment, wave around this room. Come on, look at all these people. You know what God was doing? He was imparting a new anointing. He was imparting a fresh oil from heaven so that you could step in to a new level of glory. Come on, today we're going to step out we're going to step out of laziness and we're going to step into stewardship. You know, sometimes when you're not getting prophetic words and God is not speaking has anybody ever felt that? And you're going, what's wrong? Why isn't he saying anything? That happens to everyone at some time in their life. You know what I've learned to do? Go back to the last thing that he spoke to you and start to do it. See, God's not calling us to just collect prophetic words so that you could tell your friends the man of God prophesied over me. The woman of God prophesied over me. See, some people got a whole bunch of keys but they're not using the keys. Here's what I've learned about the kingdom of God. Jesus said this. To him who has, to him who has been given, he will be given more. But to him who has but does not use it, even what he has will be taken. Remember the stewards? The parable of the minus? There, there were faithful stewards. And there were poor stewards. How many know that Jesus told this parable? about how he gave talents to every person. But some of them took those talents and they put them to work. And as they used what God gave them, it multiplied. The man who had five talents put them to work, all of a sudden had ten talents. See, if you want an increase of God, an increase of the prophetic, an increase of miracles, then you got to use the gift. you got to release the gift. <laughs> but there was another who only was given one talent. 
તો ખાવે પીરે લી છે એન્ડ હી બરીડ ધ ટેલન્ટ ઇન ધ ગ્રાઉન્ડ એરી આ ભયાર તો એ તો ખેયા પીરે અમે મીજીરે માં મ્યો લાઈટ બીકોઝ હી વોઝ અફ્રેડ ઓફ હિઝ માસ્ટર તો આ તો સી આવ ચાવ લેતો એન્ડ વેન ધ માસ્ટર કેમ બેક તમે તો ખેમ પ્યા લારે ખા હી વોઝ અપસેટ વિથ હિમ તો ખેયા સઈ સોરે હી સેડ વાય ડિડ યુ બરી ધેટ ભાભી મીરે માં તો મ્યો લા ધીસ ગાઇસ ધે ધે ગ્રો ધેર ટેલન્ટ્સ તો માં સુ જેઝુ શીએ હી સેડ ટેક હિઝ ટેલન્ટ એ સુ જેઝુ યુ વિરો એન્ડ ગિવ ઇટ ટુ ધ વન ધેટ ગ્રો ધ ટેલન્ટ્સ ધ મોસ્ટ અચ્છા તો ધુ પી લાઈટે Here's the way the kingdom works. I am praying that you know it from them today. The grace of God. Pray Jesus to her. Will come on the hungry. Sanga de dure pobe la me. The grace of God. Pray Jesus to her. Will come on those. A cho do dure. Who are willing to steward the word of the Lord. Kaum mo za pa na thai me dure pobe la. Learning to position themselves. Tro ko tro. To receive what God has. Pray pe re ya go ya yu chen ne dure pobe la ma pye de. Come on, we're going to pray. So down jaya. Here's what we're going to do. Chino balo mane so yin. I'm going to make a decree. Chino che nya me. That God would release his spirit. Paya ta ke tu ye wunye go ton lao mo. That God would release his power. Paya ta ke tu ye bait te go ton lao mo. That he would release a prophetic impartation. Paya ta ke be the prophetic impartation ya bo. I don't need to come lay hands on you. Chino ten bo ma la wis let ten ya ma lo ba. Because he's already put the oil on you. Pablo le ten bo ma paya tu ye bait te si ne ton lao baby chi. Earlier tonight. Di nya ku na ga. You got to understand. Ten na le bo lo re. some of the greatest impartation account zone impartation eh in fact the greatest impartation to to mya mya do impartation eh account zone ha from his presence pa ya ye mya maw do wa ni la da phit de listen in the upper room attack kha ma no man laid hands on the 120 tiya na sei bo ma ba du ma la lat ma tin ma the wind of heaven came account ge ye mya maw do la da the fire of god pa ya ye mi taw la da listen if you want that come a ke lo ari ya go tin lo jin ne so la ge ba shi yo la ge ba We're going to release this. Yeah, it's been they just going to sang it so And then after I release this. Can I say look here? I want you to begin to praise the Lord. Sa bi do phaya go Jesus do chi man say jin dai. Now I know we're going late. Can I know now ja ne bi phit dai. But this is an important message. Da ha ye ji de message phit ba dai. For the Burmese people. Ye ma lu myo dai do a. This is an important message. Da ha ye ji de message. For your destiny, your calling. Dai la me ana ga do a ye ji dai. Come on. And God is going to release His power. He's going to release the anointing. Then, but my baby, the gift of prophecy. Prophet, you didn't pay the signs and wonders. The mail like an arrow. The miracles of God. He's going to give you all the baby things. The angels of heaven are already coming into the room. God, 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 You guys receive. Then let him up. And then I want you to worship God tonight for what he's done. So Father, we release right now. Jesus, 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 Jesus,
Nogani of two or three witnesses. The word of the Lord is established. God is going to begin to make clear his words to you. Here's, here's how you know the word is from God. He keeps speaking it over and over and over. He'll speak to you. That's one witness. It could come. Or a dream or a vision. Amen. Still small voice of the Lord. Where he speaks to you. That's one witness. Then he might have someone else prophesy. Over you. That's two witnesses. For some of you, you might after he speaks to you, you find it in the word. Wow. That's three witnesses. See, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, the word of the Lord is established. Come on, somebody give Jesus a big hand. Now listen, I have to be at the airport in one hour. So I gotta go. But I want you to end with a song of worship. And also, I want you to do one thing for me. Real quickly. And I want you. I want you to release the fire of God. Over San Diego. San Diego. I'm going to record it. I want you to pray that the fire of God that is in this place would be released in San Diego. San Diego. So here we go. Come on. Listen, they're praying for you right now. San Diego. They're praying for the release of fire over you. Come on. Come on, they're praying for you, Instagram. They're praying for you, Facebook. That you would receive Holy Ghost fire from Malaysia. ဒီအမ်စီအတင်းတော်ရဲ့တရားဟောချက်များပဲဖြစ်ပါတယ်မိတ်ဆွေရာမလေးရှားနိုင်ငံမှာနေထိုင်တဲ့ဆိုရင်